All right, welcome back, everybody. Happy Friday. <clears throat> this is April the 17th, and we are continuing our leveling tips series, tips on leveling. And um, let's check out the cafe. What I really want to focus on in this episode is talk a little bit about how to find hot spots. And um, if we look at the cafe here, we've got rough, a couple white bream orders, crucian orders. That one rough order is pretty easy and pretty nice. We'll just keep an eye on where we're fishing if we're seeing any rough. Okay, so um, the, the thing I want to say about hot spots, I think the most important thing about finding good spots to fish is getting into a community. So I've showed you before in this series that if you want to join our chat channel here, uh, you just click this wheel here and search my dogs. There are lots of communities in this game. Um, and a lot of crossover too. I mean, if you play this game a lot, you'll get to know most of the, or a lot of the players. You'll be surprised how that kind of ends up working out. But getting a part of a community, we're constantly in, in, in our chat, we're talking about where what's working and not working at different places. The other thing I will tell you is to go to the RF4 website. So if you just search for Russian Fishing 4 Forum, F-O-R-U-M, if you search for that in Google, you'll pull up the Russian Fishing 4 Forum very easily. And if you do that, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. That's weird, that place on the map isn't marked. If you do that, you'll see that occasionally people uh, update on the Russian Fishing 4 forums, um, which is nice. But they're not doing it as much as they used to. It's not as good a spot as it used to be. And part of that is because for a while there, we were using Discord. RF4 had a Discord channel. It has since shut that channel down. So that is no longer available to us. Um, but there are other places and, and there's, I, you know, I thought about like, well, I could link this site, but I don't, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. It's a Russian site. I don't really know about this site. I don't know if it's safe. I don't really know anything about it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you I have recently started going to, it's basically like a Facebook site, except it's in Russia. Um, if you type in R U fish, so the letters R U F I S H and then the number four dot R U. I think that will get you to this site and Google translate will work, but it's a pretty active site uh, because so many uh, folks over in, in Russia and Germany play this game it's actually kept pretty active. So that's another good resource for hotspots. As you get to know spots yourself, as you find out about spots and try them, you will start to build up your own sort of memory of, okay, what are good spots to try? And a lot of those spots do cycle back around, okay? So we're, I'm gonna give you an example of this. Oh, I don't have any of that fake bream mix. Well, let's just put Reg, let's just put uh, Crucian Gibble on this for now. And let's go with our big hook again. So 11. Um, and we're going to try maggots and bloodworm is what we want to try at least to start off with. Okay. So this is, this is a spot that we're not going to clip it because there's no clip information on the site that I'm looking at. But supposedly this is a pretty good spot. And I might should have cast a little further. They're saying cast 70, 90%. I'm a low level player on this account, so I might not have the cast strength that some of them do. But what I'm hearing is that this is a pretty good spot and I think it's gonna be for Bream, but we'll find out together. So this is me testing a spot um, to see if it's good. So let's keep the 14 on. Let's actually put the cheap 14 on because we, it's possible we're going to pop this one. And we will try Bloodworm on this one. Um, we could even go with um, a little smaller hook than that with Bloodworm. But all right, so we're going straight out there, right? And I'm going to do a 92% cast or 95% cast. I'm going to start doing that. And the reason why I, I think this is the right direction to cast, because I assume if this is a bream spot, what we're doing here is we are going after the five meter hole. All right. And in the meantime, I'm going to go get some of that. I'm going to, we're going to make some fake bream ground bait. 
And, you know, usually when you find a hot spot, according to whoever gives you the information, a lot of times you'll have very exact information, like use this hook size, use this bait. It's this spot, you know, cast in this direction with this clip. But I'll tell you, a lot of times, the spot is actually a lot bigger than that. Oftentimes you can vary where you're casting. All right, maggots, millage, porridge is what we're going for here. Um, and so don't feel like you're locked into exact coordinates if someone gives you a spot. Just kind of see what the, the, um, the hot spot is and then do some exploring. Sometimes you will actually find for you changing things up slightly might end up working better. So we're gonna do three of these. We can never have too many crackers. And I do think I'm gonna use crackers again. I think there's an argument to be made for semolina, um, using semolina in this mix, but we're gonna do crackers. And then let's just get one more thing of sunflower oil because we can't afford anise oil. The other thing you could use is, is vanilla. Uh, for the attractant. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do fake bream ground bait, and I think it all works pretty well. Bream are, are cautious, but they don't seem to be super picky on baits or ground bait. That is awesome. Um, so let's see how this is looking. I'm guessing there's a fish on at least one of these. All right, let's see what species this is. Nice, we need rough. So that is good news if, oh wait. Oh yeah, 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 let's go ahead and put it back in. We'll make the, um, we'll make the ground bait. While we're, while we've got the lines in. Let's check the blood worms as well. Okay, nothing on the blood worms yet, so we'll keep watching that. We also know that sometimes red worms work, so if blood worms don't work, we could test red worms. And I will get the um, I will get the float rod out eventually, but for now, I want to get this ground bait made. Now it comes down to the decision: Do I want to do vanilla? I think I will do vanilla. I think you can go both ways, sunflower oil and vanilla. Let's make one with um, sunflower oil. You see it changes the color of the ground bait a little bit. All right, so right in front of us, we're probably at one and a half meters. So we're gonna end up wanting to go with a, uh, we want a small hook here. Let's just go with worms. And let's go like 1.4 and just see if that works. I don't know if there'll be fish right in front of us here or not, but ooh, let's go a little farther than that. And we'll just watch the float just out of curiosity to see if we can get any bites there. It'd be nice to be able to catch rough or something close to us if possible. All right, this feels like this could be a small bream. And this is where very soon, especially if we start having a chance of catching bream, very soon we're gonna have to make a decision on which way we wanna go on up, uh, upgrading that second, that second feeder rod because we won't be able to catch um, nice bream on this, on this rig very comfortably at all. So let's see what's, let's see what's on the blood worm. If, if rough will also get on the blood worm, then it's worth using it. Um, I think that is just a tiny bream. So bream are biting the blood worm. What size hook do we have? 14? Maybe we do maggots on both because we have a chance of catching rough. Let's just see how this goes. I also need to switch both ground baits and I haven't done that yet it 
So if you've watched the last couple episodes, I would definitely say the place across the lake that we've been fishing at is a hot spot. At low levels, especially for lower level play players, a hot spot may just be a spot where you're catching a decent percentage of markers. So you're making money off of them and the bite rate's really good. I think the farther you get in the game level wise and some of the later lakes, for a hot spot to be good, you're really looking for the ability to target specific fish, you know, and then also good bite rates, good markers. But here at Mosquito, like a hot spot might just be something where you're catching crucian gibbles, um, roaches, uh, you know, it, it might it might not be limited to just one or two species. It might be like just everything is biting here, which this is kind of what that spot over there is. Now this one is hopefully going to be really good at catching bream or have us a chance of catching bream. And if it's if it's good and as our gear gets a little better, that can be a really nice spot for a uh, low level player if you can get pretty good at it. I don't think I've seen any activity on the second line yet, but the first line may have something on it. Let's check. All right, this is a rough, I'm guessing. This will give us a chance to put the right ground bait on this one. That is a rough, which I am completely fine with. All right, so we're gonna put fake bream on there and see what that does to our catch. We still don't have the fake bream mix on the second line. Got two rough. What did we need? Five total? We might get there in this spot. I'm going to recast this one. Put the right ground bait on there. We'll do the one with um, sunflower oil in this one. Uh, let's see. Okay, that one has the vanilla, sunflower oil. Make sure we're still casting in the right direction here. Nothing's happening right there, is it? It's a real deal bream there. Might be 
two kilos, something like that, maybe 1.2. Oh, that's a common. Never mind. Is it a marker common, though? I think it is. Wow. 2.56. Let's go ahead and do full cast. Let's see if it's better at full cast. I, we just don't have all our points in and stuff. So if a high level player is at this spot and 70 90 percent cast for them might be 120 percent cast for us i am a little nervous about this uh this rod right now so we're going to go to a much smaller hook and put worms on and go back to regular ground bait let's go to an 18 hook worms and regular ground bait um because we want to see if we can we want to see if we can get a rough on that one so that was a 25 meter cast. And this isn't doing anything over here. Oh my goodness. That's because it was snagged and the hook broke. So we just lost our cheap 18 hook. And I don't know that we want to put that out there with anything else. So be careful right there. Apparently it snags in something that's under the water. Um, Let's go get a, um, that common carp scared me. That was weird. Let's go get a cheap couple of 18 or, or cheap 18 replacement. Let's also see if the hook, the uh, rough size, like are we up to, yeah, we're at two out of five. That's nice. That'll be a huge bonus if we could hit that. I'll just get hooks as we need them. I'm gonna get the really cheap one though for a replacement for our um, telescopic rod because so much can happen with that we break a lot of hooks potentially so hopefully this will be a rough Okay, that might be a bream as well. Not quite a marker though. Got to keep on digging, right? Well, I would say because we don't have things like pea porridge, garlic dough, you know, some of those baits that 
might increase the bite rate with the bream here. I would say so far this spot doesn't seem worth it with what we have to fish with. But we can, when we can get a little more dialed in on bream, it might be worth it. We would struggle at, with any bream spot with this setup to really get dialed in. But these bites are coming way too slow. Guess it's possible that we should be trying more out this way. Before the the night's over, let's are we snagged? No, we just didn't have our drag up enough with the weight of everything, I guess. All right, so let's go like 90% cast, just kind of out this way. Or 80%, I guess. Because this is too slow, the way we were casting. Should be able to dig again. All right. Well, if it's a bream, we might be onto something. Hmm. All right, so we might have to try this spot again based on the casting direction. another perch no common yeah we're getting more activity over here it looks like Reamer here. Some pretty nice roach right here coming out. Ah, missed it.
All right, while it's still early in the morning, let's go get a heat check on our other hot spot. So we'll see. Till I get some more information or do some more testing, I'm not willing to call that first place a hot spot. Uh, let's see here. Let's go. What were we doing? Like, let's do it back to clip six. Actually, I might want to do clip five. Um, let me think about this. Bread has been really good here. Do I have the right ground bait on? Yeah, I think I do on this one. And then I want to do a little larger hook than that. I think fourteen might be a little more ideal. Do we keep trying maggots here for now, or we're, let's try maggots at first? And then we can always switch it up. And we know the float has been working really good here. We need to go to about. 80 depth or something. Yeah, we can just keep worm on this one. So with this hot spot, really what you're wanting to do during the day, bread has been working great at night. Uh, worms and maggots, although really everything has been working pretty good in this spot because so many different fish species are biting in this spot. But really what you want to do is a short clip or just kind of aim either your bottom feeder or your float between the two sets of lilies and kind of in that open water area between the two sets of lily pads there. It's gonna be a nice tinch, guys. That is a really nice tinch. hate to pass up on that easy roach order <clears throat> um, not roach order rough order but since we're talking all about hot spots I'd rather stay in a hot spot instead of just chasing after ro rough at the moment This is such a good spot, especially if you're low level.
Another tinch. Good grief. Some money fish. All right, guys, let's try red worm. Let's just see if we can get some. Uh, let's go clip 14. And let's just do the, um, the rough thing while it's still early enough in the morning to do it. Do a little rotating. We can now use Patternoster. And every every little bit we'll go um we'll go check the 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 rough rod see if anything's on there um okay so if you look at pattern let's say what it's let's see what it says about pattern simple bottom rig in which the feeder is attached to a separate leader a universal option for all occasions so one reason why i don't switch to pattern is because i have points in simple bottom and especially now um where you can attach cages to the simple bottoms it's crazy but All right, let's go see what we got a rough on. I don't know if it is still this way, but now that we're digging and getting some red worms, I used to get um, really good uh, rough on red worm. This is something big though. This might be a bream or something. It's a roach. Might even be worth putting a, a size 20 hook, y'all. That, that might be the thing. Maybe the next time we, uh, next episode, just to sort of solve this, although I have some spots at Winding Rivulet I wanna try, but I might try putting on like a size 20 hook on worm and red worm in that spot and see if that gets us back into the rough. I'm just, I'm thinking back to like last time I did a leveling process and we did a lot of rough fishing for orders. And I'm wondering if, I'm just trying to remember, but I'm thinking I might've used smaller hooks and it might've been red worm or worm on there.
I think just right now, and of course spots change. This will be this could be totally different three days from now, but I think right now this is the best spot at Mosquito overall. I think there's a fish on it's just like slowly moving what is that like a little sleeper or something yeah so we're down to 15 maggots but they're cheap to replace There we go. I think between even a smaller hook and using red worms some now, I think rough are gonna be, we're gonna be killing them. I'm just curious, it's, it would be unusual for the weekly roughs. I mean, pe people catch rough in so many different lakes and rivers. Um, yeah, none of them are on, on, um, on mosquito. winding red worm oh there's mosquito worm and that's the japan server Let's see about usa server yeah people are catching rough on bait fish what that's strange All right, so these start at 18. These do start at 20, so we could do those. Could be even smaller here. Could be like 22. Well, they're sold out. So let's just get a 20 of this. Oh, they're sold out. Can we get a 20 of this? Okay. We could get a 22 of this, but that's 13 silver. I'd rather stay away from that right now. Let's see what's on our feeders, and then we probably ought to see if we can turn any orders in before any cycle off. That's not a rough. Bream. It's a little late in the day. We might still catch another rough or something. Certainly will at night, I feel like, with smaller hooks and red worms. Burning through the food again with all this digging. But we are up to 8.5 now. Wow, that's interesting. Sleeper. All right, it's daytime. Do we have bread on? Nope, we need to switch to bread.
solid sleeper bites. Yeah, it's just not rough time right now, but I think that's going to be the approach. And remember, we're doing all this with two feeders. If you enjoy feeder fishing, use three. I mean, you're going to do even better. Float fishing can't keep up with the feeder fishing. At least for me. The way I do it. But I've enjoyed doing more float this time around. Uh, it's something that I just don't do very often, so... I'm okay with it but it's certainly efficient to use three feeders. We'll see how long that lasts, by the way. <laughs>
those red worms. We need them. Mm. It's not quite on there. Sleeper. I like these sleepers. They'll just like take it down and hang out with it for a while. You got plenty of time. Okay, let's go look at the cafe real quick. Remember, if red worms gets really good and you're having a hard time keeping up with red worms by digging, last time I looked at least, they were some in stock at uh, Winding. Well, hold on. Isn't there two crucian orders? Yeah, we, we should be able to get that if we fish there a little longer, right? That is the easiest grip gibble order ever, huh? So rough has plenty of time. We're just too short. I'll spend a lot on a hook there, but if we do catch some decent rough on it, it will pay for itself quickly. problem is we're catching so many more gibbles than crucians for that order. That's a crucian. Let's see if we can uh, do a little more crucian damage and then we're going to try to get, get those last couple rough before wrapping this episode up. I have a couple of places to check at winding. And so I don't know if we'll do that in the very next episode, but we may. Um, A moon has uh, given me some spots to check on winding that might be pretty good for kind of where we're at. Especially if we can upgrade our second feeder a little bit. There's a nice little crucian. It'll work towards that smaller order at least. The goal is to try to get 
where we can fill the bigger crucian order first and then still have enough to do a smaller one. to see. Woo. It's a fatty something. Look at that roach. Good grief. Time is it 17, 18? Let's go check and see where we are. I hate to leave this spot if we're like one crucian away, but if we've completed it, then I, I would rather go ahead and switch and see if we can't finish this rough order up real quick and get both done. Oh, one of the crucian orders disappeared. And it's placed by another rough order. <laughs> oh crap. Okay. Okay. Maybe 14 is enough where we won't get snagged too much.
Now we need to figure out if red worm or regular worm is going to be better for these rough. School of Perch right now. No? It's a bream at no Big ol' rough. It's snagged. Well, I think we at least got the small rough order, right? I think. That might be all we can do for now. I don't know if I can stay long enough to get the... Well, we need at least four or five more big ones.
So even with a 22 hook, we're still catching some other stuff. Although once it gets to be overnight, I bet we wouldn't be, we might still get an occasional small bream like that, I guess, but the perch would die off, which would be nice. Pretty sure our most valuable fish will be those tench. We're down a rod. Basically, we'd have to travel or re-log to get that rod back. But we're about to wrap it this, this one up anyway. We should get at least one more episode in tonight, if not if not more than one. And I do want to um, I do want to at least peek into a couple places at uh, Winding. We'll see. With the current and all that, we may need to use three feeders there. I don't know. We'll see. a chub all right So you would need six, but that's 83 silver. Once we get the rough spot working right, we can hit we can hit orders like that, no problem. I mean, this is 28 silver, and those are tiny. This is really nice because we're hitting a bunch of orders, and probably the next time we get a a uh, episode in a lot of these will be reset all right let's look by price yep six silver for that largest tench so that's 59 more silver total most expensive fish was that tench so we're at 173 so i think what's going to be really tempting and i'm not going to do it now i'm going to think about it before our next episode Well, one thing that's really tempting is going ahead and put another point in harvesting baits. Just get more red worms. But what's going to be really tempting is instead of, before we start saving for the expense, more expensive stuff, go ahead and getting another feeder start.
Because then from there... I don't even know what we do from there. We really have enough power there that we could, if we're just going to use two feeders or the third being our light one, we could save for the Fortuna feeder. Or maybe a sort of in-between thing would be to save for the a picker and show using a picker for a little while. We're at 26%. we got to get to 40 on that. I don't know. We'll see. But as always, thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you a little later on. Peace out.